Hey, I hope you're having a fantastic week. And today we will look at something that might seem silly even. Uh, but let's jump into some of the things that you can do from the tracks themselves, from the outside of the tracks. You'll get what I mean. Like, let's just jump into Reaper straight from Mexico City. My name is Juan Chis. And here's your mixer, right? Like, I'm using the default theme so everyone can see that many of the things that I will be showing, it doesn't matter which skin you're using, you will probably have something that makes a reference to what I'm talking about. So I'm on Reaper 7. It's really interesting to me that I don't think we have ever taken enough time to talk about the parts of the track. First of all, in options, themes, theme adjuster, remember that you can change the size of the track itself and you can change a lot of particular things of what you can and cannot see. Honestly, I prefer having some bigger metering, but just because it gives me a better sense of how my levels are working and what's the dynamic range in every single one of them. Let's start by talking that sometimes when you're trying to interact with several tracks at the same time and you don't want to apply only the height to one of them, you can hold Command on Mac. Every time I say Command on this video, for PC users, it's controlled. I hold Command and everything changes at once. So I can change the height or the space available for my sense for all of my tracks. <coughs> and now we have like a much better way to deal with this. Also in the theme adjuster, you will end up finding out in the mixer control panel or in the track control panel, the TCP and the MCP. If you scroll down, you will see the actual parts of it. And for example, if you feel like the tracks are way too tight, you can change to standard the tracks themselves or just adjust them to whatever you might feel it's best. And from top to bottom, the way I'd like to, to teach consoles even, is we have to think of what's coming in and what's happening to the signal as we go through the track and then how it comes out. So usually we will have something emptying down from here going into the XLR input or jack input or TRS, whatever. And you will have different things. In the case of Reaper, what you have here is first the input. If you're listening to mono, if you're listening to the MIDI, if you're listening to what inside that track, specifically in that track. Then we have this strange idea that I'm like, Reaper has it, I don't use it to be honest, but it's the FX in section of the track. That means that whatever is being recorded will be recorded through that, but it won't be processed once it's become a media item inside of Reaper. So if it's coming from this side, it won't be processed by the in FX. But if you have a plugin on your FX inserted, you will always monitor through it, but you will, not, you will not print the audio into Reaper with that effects unless you actually glue it, render it, or do some action of that sort. Then we have this in assigned that has to do with what's being recorded by this track. Remember that I built a specific action that simply lets me press P on my keyboard and it will create an track create a new track and print it. And this sort of routing would happen and would be assigned precisely by recording out, as you can see right here. I'm changing the track assignment of recording output stereo. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. So in Reaper, remember that we also have different panning modes. By default, when you open Reaper, you have the 3x balance, and that means that you can move your signals from left to right, and that's fine. But I'm using, by default, pan mode stereo pan. And I think that's better because it's true panning. It's not only lowering the level of the opposite channel where you're not panning to. 
uh, and that gives you two different knobs, one for the panning itself and another one for the width of the track, right? So I can have a full pan and something coming in and make it a little bit narrower. There's another option where you can cycle from the pan modes, but this will be another way of doing it using the dual pan and you can change the panning of the left channel from the right channel. Since we don't have mono tracks on Reaper, you can send both of them, both of them here or something like this or something like that. And that has specific purposes. We will talk about that in different moments, of course. So from there you have the mute. If you don't want to listen to that track, you have the solo button. If you want to only listen to that track, uh, this goes really well hand in hand with solo in front that I have here on my custom cool toolbar. I have a whole video on my favorite toolbars. Uh, and what this does is once you click that solo button, it's going to dim out the rest of what's being played. So you don't stop listening to everything because many decisions shouldn't be made in solo. Uh, it depends uh, again on many factors, on, but specifically for mixing, I can assure you that solo pretty much never works, right? So solo dim might be better for a couple of things. Then this small area that I think most people don't really understand what it is, is the parent send this first green stripe, then send to another track on a yellow stripe and receiving from another track on a blue stripe. That's what these three stripes mean. There's a couple of shortcuts that you might want to take advantage of. If you're holding Option or Alt on your keyboard and you left click that, you can disable the send straight to your parent track. Uh, that could be a folder or it could be an auxiliary or a boss, something that's containing that one. So for example, if I have a tone generator and I fold this one into the auxiliary folder, let's call it like that, and I fold it by hitting F on my keyboard, it's coming out through here, and then it's going out into my master, right? But if I don't want it to go out through the auxiliary folder, I can just option and click, and now it's not coming out through here. I can also take advantage of that specific section by just clicking and dragging into another track and that creates automatically a send to another track. For me, that's one of the most brilliant things on Reaper. Another way of doing this really fast is that if you want to create a send and disable the parent send track, is you can hold option, click and drag, and it's going to disable the parent send track and then send to another track. And you do all of that in one single click. Then you have this FX button that means that you have your effects on. That means also instruments. It's not only the effects, right? It's any plugin uh, in that track. You can turn all of them on or off. And I don't like to use this small window that makes you switch from one effect to another using this left side. I like to float them, so I don't use it, but it's there. Then the next icon is the, the envelopes. Remember that we got a new design of the envelopes. You can just search for any parameter of any plugin and that will display the given envelope in the track control panel or the arrange view as you like to call it. And that works really fast. And last but not least, we have this face inversion button. What will happen is that if you flip that polarity, not face, what will happen is exactly the same as double clicking this MIDI item and hitting invert. I don't know why they call it face. It makes me mad. Uh, <clears throat> but see what happens. I apply it and now it's going first up and then down, right? That's the difference. You're flipping the polarity, the plus and the minus. That's what you're inverting. It's not phase because a phase is it's time and we are not, we're not doing this. We are flipping positive and negative. That's why it's polarity and not phase. Okay, I'm done with that rant. So fun things that you can do with your tracks is once you know more or less the anatomy of any track, you can start linking actions from 
one track to another. So for maybe sending uh, vocals and guitars to a reverb, it might be a little bit slow to go one track than the other, right? Uh, even though I have shown actions to do that uh, a lot faster, one way to do it only by using the mixer and the tracks themselves, this also works, of course, on the track control panel as long as it's big enough and you can see that specific part of it and you can change it again on the theme adjuster is you have to hold shift on your keyboard as you're doing these actions. So now I can just drag while I have shift on my keyboard and now they are both sent, right? This also works for deactivating the parent send. So I can hold shift, hold option, and then create the send and see it's getting disabled from the parent send and it's only being sent. And now the reverb is receiving both of those tracks. I like having the send levels on my tracks because I feel it's easier to just control them from here. Uh, I can reset them. I can turn them off by hitting shift and left clicking them. Uh, some people might want to have some parameters at sight of some plugins. I'm not really sure why, but I know some people would like to. So, for example, if you're using the new Treasure by Toucan, and you might want to have, I don't know, your threshold or your input of some plugins always at sight without having to open the plugin itself, and you don't have the right-click uh, show embedded UI on MCP or TCP, what you can do is on the theme adjuster, show effects parameters. And you will see that it opens up another small section right here that wasn't there before, where you can assign parameters from it. So now I have the input of my new treasure here. And let's suppose I also have PSP chamber because uh, it's free and I made a video on it and an EQ for whatever reason, right? So I'll click the next available FX parameter and from here I will change the decay. And now I have all of this available without even having to open my plugins. Some people might, might find that useful and might want to incorporate that into their workflow. There's a workflow that I try to incorporate in my own way of working. I didn't like it, and it's the extended mixer. So here again on the theme adjuster, you will see something that's called sidebar, right? So only if the track is selected, I want it to have a sidebar. This means that I will have a very, very long fader, and I will have all of this space available for plugins, all of these parameters available, and all of this space for sense also available. If this makes any sense for you, go ahead. I'm pretty sure some people will probably like all of their tracks like that. I'm not sure if that's comfortable to see, but at least I'm sure that some people might find a bit more use of this when they are having some bigger sessions. Again, some skins might separate better the tracks on the mixer control panel than others. So for example, in the skin that I'm using, usually this makes a little bit more sense, right? Uh, I can actually see a little bit better the separation between the tracks. So again, it really depends on what way you're working in and what the theme adjuster of your skin lets you do. Remember that for changing the width faster, instead of just clicking right here, you can just click and drag this small knob and it will show you and it will tell you right here, you will see which width of track you have and what is affecting what, right? So it's jumping the white from here to there. If the strip width is this super, super short, for whatever reason it is like that. And I want to change the meters, the meter size or the label height or the order of what I want to see, you can do it. So feel free to spend a little bit more time knowing where to click things, what does it do, and 
like there's a ton of things that go hand in hand with this sort of customization that's not too deep but that will let you work with whatever ways you really want to work. For example, uh, clicking on the record monitoring speaker button, clicking on the arm button to set the track ready to record either MIDI or audio, whatever is selected and whatever you're recording here as well. And double clicking at the bottom to change the name of the track. Remember that hitting tab will change from one track to another so you can rename everything faster. And again, I I do like a little bit better the Reaper 7 global overview, but I have kept on adjusting a little bit and a little bit a lot of things from the theme that I'm using. Some contrast things are always useful to have a little bit brighter. And in the case of the TCP, that's also full of tracks, of course. What you might want to have in the track controls is a little bit more graphical, that's why I went into the mixer control panel option. You can change the size of the indent when you're fold using tracks as folders. And for both situations, you have different layouts available. Uh, and this means that you can switch from one way of viewing all of your session to another. With smaller tracks, less of these, less of that, some things might be better for recording, some things might not. So for example, if I have Area EQ here, and I'm displaying it on the TCP. I could also change if I wanted to have that on the left side, on the top side, on the left side, on the right section. Like I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. Uh, I don't know, maybe you want here to have something like VU meters, you know, and have them always at sight at least in folders, maybe that makes sense for you. The size of the track names, uh, what you want to get hidden first when you're making this longer or shorter, like all of that, I think is a lot easier to understand in this big panel for the track control panel, where you can see if the mixer is visible, some things will hide, that's why we weren't able to see the routing. Uh, but if it's not selected, some things or everything might be showing uh like you have all of the info go into your reaper make it yours i think that's the beauty of reaper i have a buy me a coffee link down at the bottom so if you want to support my work feel free to do it and if you like this kind of videos be sure to comment like subscribe and hit that notification bell straight from mexico city my name is juanchis and thanks for listening